Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a Geek Verse review. My name is the adopted Trasnell, and I'm joined by the tour guide, Kirk and Patsy. I am the brain jail, Taylor Field. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if uh, I guess you probably couldn't guess by the nicknames, but the title of this, we are reviewing <laughs> 2021's Malignant, directed by the great James Wan, master of horror, Aquaman director, all these good things. But before we get into that, Taylor, where could they quickly find us on the interwebs? Because like we said, we got tons of stuff popping off right now. In October, we're going to have reviews. We got something uh, uh, in September, but October, we're going to have fun announcements. We're going to have content. We're going to be gearing up to the charity stream it's uh, i'm talking to people I'm, I'm i'm making arrangements so we're gonna have a fun time so where can they find all that stuff though we're signing contracts we're we're cashing in favors it's gonna be good yeah where they where can they Geek find first. It? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is our home base Geek first guys on our twitter Geek first is our facebook check us out on our facebook because i got something that i'm whipping up oh at a cooking pot God. and it's gonna come out soon so something he keeps saying there's something but we'll see so yeah coming up uh lots of newscasts uh it will be the new era definitely this will be my last one for a little bit because we have no choice but this i Sunday falsely promoted was... i got so like hype on the twitter <laughs> well i thought i thought whatever it's still the it's still the new era but sunday was when my package <laughs> has to arrive but uh yeah lots of fun stuff uh i'll get these guys to promote in the future but september 25th will be the return of after nine uh if i'm not free i'm gonna try to to jump on that even if it's for a little bit because i'd love to catch it with everybody we haven't done it in a while and i think i think for october speaking of malignant and scary stuff we should try to do like a after nine dress up edition i feel like we should do that i was supposed to be joined by you to dress up last year and you left me hanging i don't know no, if it was after was nine because i no. dressed up as you and you're supposed to dress up as me remember but you no forgot. you never to- no you never told me that but either way we can talk about it so that's going on we got the PlayStation Showcase just happened. Tons of reviews. If you're on the review feed, we have four Geekverse feeds. Just check out that. We have Sung chi What If. I reviewed Karen, which was quite a movie. Tons of stuff popping up. But everything we do is down below. And most importantly, head over to Patreon because you get behind-the-scenes updates. You get exclusive ad-free and early episodes. And as we said, you support us there. We get even more time to make content and more just ability to create Hopefully shows you like. So, yeah, we got lots of stuff popping off, lots of fee in the fire. And then the last thing is down below or it's on our Twitter Facebook. Go there. There will be a link to our survey. All of September, we have an anonymous survey. So what you like about us, what you don't like, you can tell us and you don't got to feel bad. So if you want to say something just that goes to the bone like uh, somebody in this movie, you can tell us. And then October, we're going to probably do some sort of town hall and answer some sort of questions and whatnot. So. This is a review. As always, we're going to give our non spoiler thoughts. We'll do a break, and then you can come back with spoilers. Or if you've seen it, then you're good to go and listen to the whole thing. So I want to hear Kirkland Patzer's thoughts on Malignant. So I'm there very you. curious. Obviously, this just came out this last week. How was your experience watching this? <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I mean, I was really looking forward to this movie. I really, really liked the trailer. I thought it was really just spooky and had a lot of just questions that need answering and Mm -hmm. uh i i must say i quite enjoyed this film it 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 got to some parts where it just (laughs) completely completely like blew my mind in a sense of like i just wasn't expecting us going this specific route and there are certain scenes going on i'm like is this still the same movie like i it it just it seemed like it, it had a shift of just completely changing what the movie was but um i don't think that really brought it down over like all in all i i enjoyed the movie I, I thought it was a fun movie experience um it wasn't too freaky I, I think i was expecting it to be scarier maybe just because certain moments that happened it was just like oh okay this is happening um but in in a sense of like at least in the earlier stages of the movie i thought it did really really good with just some like classic horror movie tropes and cinematography wise there's so many like just wonderful shots in this um and visually like i I really love like travis has on him right now if you're watching the video just like the red aesthetic it it, like played such a fun part in multiple scenes in this and i i think a lot of moments that had either really fun audio cues really interesting camera shots it it really did a good job at like building on suspense and it was fun for me um I am not the biggest fan of just like jump scares, especially when they're just like forced down your throat. But I thought mm-hmm. this one, 
they were used in like clever ways and it wasn't just like overly done like because some movies you can just have like back-to-back jump scares and it's just like okay like i jumped but like this isn't really like fun anymore to watch is it so i, I i'm glad that it was limited in, in the jump scares in this one um and all in all i'm just excited to talk about it because this is just a movie i don't think i've ever seen anything like this before um we were having some fun playing call of duty last night quote in the movie so i i'm just excited to talk about specific moments and i i i think it was like it, an original enough idea that that it made it fun to watch for me and i i think that's all i really want to touch upon maybe maybe if i talk about like the performances non-spoiler wise i thought for the most part the acting was like so so um maybe just like the the i don't know if you'd put it on like just the director i i felt like it was so so like performances but like the directing was like really good so like maybe that that lifted it for me um maybe it's the camera shots they chose um the audio cues and there's like all these things that lifted it up for me maybe that's what helped it but nonetheless i i quite enjoyed it and i i think i recommend it to if you like like a horror like like maybe if if you like uh like old slasher what, movies uh, yeah say, <laughs> who would you recommend this to kirkland yeah <laughs> horror horror fans um no but the, <laughs> yeah you like the, horror Give yeah, it a shot. there was a lot of moments that it just reminded me of like an 80s slasher whether it was like the over-the-top visuals um yeah i, I don't know I'll, I'll get into more specifics spoiler wise but what do you guys think of it well, I'll go next because we always know how Taylor feels, so it's always good to get a wide variety before I, I, I okay. Well, Taylor hates this movie. Let's see, let's see. Um, so <clears throat> James Wan, obviously, I think we've talked about this many times on the podcast, but I will reiterate for people if this is your first time listening, because sometimes it happens with reviews. I absolutely love James Wan. If you were each decade, probably people kind of go like, oh, in the 90s, Wes Craven was the master of horror. In the 80s, was John Carpenter. I think you could make a case for whether it's the last decade or this decade that maybe probably 2010 that James Wan was our master of horror, right? You look at Saw, that kicked off a whole franchise. We got a new Saw film this year that he still gets money for. Like, it's crazy. You have the Insidious films, which also create a franchise. You have The Conjuring, which can create a cinematic universe. And to me, these all have like their toes and being you know some lesser than others but usually for the most part pretty good especially the ones that he's directed i've always thought were really really good and i've said this for many years i think that the original conjuring is at least the top 10 horror movie i think was the best of that decade and i think any day i could sit you down and maybe explain to you why it's the greatest horror movie of all time now i think that's a big jump but i just think like that's a perfect movie for a horror movie they just they nail on the head so Anytime you're saying, hey, James Wan, and I love Aquaman. I'm one of the biggest Aquaman fans. But anytime you're like, okay, James Wan is making a horror movie, I'm in right away. It's kind of like when we talk about Ari Aster or like Robert Eggers with Lighthouse. Like there's just certain directors who's like, okay, I'm always interested to see what they're going to do. So this movie starts out, right? And I watched it home as well, HBO Max. So shout out to that. I watched it home as well. Um, It started out, and I have to say that <laughs> it caught me off guard. And we'll get into it in spoilers and everything like that. But I for the most part did not like the first act i was very i was questioning almost everything i knew in the fact of james one like like there, i'm not saying it was awful but just like this doesn't feel exactly like him like i feel like we've taken a step off the path like it, it's like it feels like it's something that's missing and i was not liking it i think I think the acting we're getting this was I think the acting overall is pretty so so to poor. Yeah. <laughs> but then so all the stuff I was like worried he lost stuff, all these things. And then I won't say what it is, but there's a big plot development. And let's just say the character was talking about how they bought a car. And the character says, and then I bought a car. And then the camera does a hard zoom in on the person they're talking to and plays the score as loud as possible. And it is the cheesiest, like laughable thing. And that's when it clicked in, in my opinion, and I haven't read any reviews yet, but I just feel like in my opinion, he went out on purpose to make like a grindhouse, like B rate, like a movie you would have found at a blockbuster and watched, like heard of no actors, no nothing, just some sort of, yeah, like Kirk was talking about, like even like a late seventies slasher of like, this is like, oh, backyard murders. Like you've like never heard of it. And the acting to me is so, so to bad, but I feel like he kind of, 
it, here's the thing. He just made a movie that's full on camp, in my opinion. Not full on, but for the majority is campy. It's a monster mash movie. It's a boogeyman movie. Like I said, the best way I describe it is almost like a grindhouse sort of, sort of feel. Not exactly like that, but just in like how it's dirty. It's very brutal. It's very the plot developments in this movie are you have to buckle up and strap the fuck in because your <laughs> your believability or uh, suspension of disbelief is about to take a fucking beating because it is a wild movie. I will say that the trailers do this movie a disservice because the first half hour I was like I wanted that movie. Once I realized the movie he was making, and then there's a moment in the third act that we'll talk about that I was just fucking in. And that's why I can say that, like, I love this movie. I went from, like, I'm so disappointed in this to, okay, this is all right, to let's fucking go. And I could not believe what we were making. I just love that this man who gave them Conjuring and then made a billion dollar, Aquaman is still the biggest movie of DC ever. I love they made this movie and Warner Brothers like, well, yeah. We got to kind of let him make this weird fucking movie because like he make Aquaman too. And like he, he's a, he produces hits, right? Like he's just top shit. So I understand too, if you haven't watched this yet, or if you've watched it and you saw the trailers, I could understand anybody that one does not like it. I watched this Emily. She fucking hates it. She calls it a trash movie, but she doesn't like campy movies to begin with. But like, I could understand if you don't like it. And I could also understand if you saw the trailer and you watched this movie, you went, that was not the movie I was expecting. We'll get into spoilers, but I think, the problem is this movie has for the mainstream is I don't know how you market the actual movie. So I see if you are expecting, if you're still non spoilers MC, if you're expecting the conjuring insidious, James Wan's doing a bunch of horror, some jump scares, some really scary stuff. It's in there, but that's not the main focus this time around. I remember a few weeks ago, I read an interview where he said like, Oh, I'm making this film and it's different than anything I've ever done before. And that's absolutely 100%. But the last point I'd say is like, if you watched Aquaman and the way Aquaman to me is on purpose, like very pulpy and very comic booky, like a throwback, but it's very cheesy and fun loving. That's what this is for horror, where it's like it's kind of a jump back into the past where it's a campy B rate horror movie, but made with better acting and like a higher budget. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to talk about this, but this is easily maybe the most wild movie I've seen this year. I think this is our like midsummer our you know lighthouse it's not get to those weird levels but there's just some weird plot developments and uh yeah i i actually can't wait to watch it again with fully knowing what we're in for so taylorfield where are you on malignant i think <clears throat> i'm similar in in some ways in the sense where when it when it first started i i wasn't really sure what was going on i mean like again like the very start of the movie i was really kind of lost like but i was trying to pick out the pieces and then it just like completely 180 and changed over into this new this story and i was like okay like i don't understand how this is connected did like i change over to a different show or movie or something mm -hmm. like that so it was very very uh confusing but then as it progressed, you know, OK, like it's the gaps are starting to be filled, starting to make sense. And I will say the acting was definitely not the best. There were certain moments and certain line drops from characters that just uh, it, it just it seemed like I, I, I think don't it's play, on purpose. I don't under, yeah, I, no, I, I think. Exactly. Yeah, I think they that did that on sense. purpose. Yeah, I don't understand the term campy used and how that's used in this. Campy is like I, another um, word for cheesy where it's like, OK, like campy would be like some of the older friday the 13th or yeah. some of the halloweens where they're just like this is like it doesn't it feels too unbelievable it's very like that where the bad acting the characters would be very over the top like that would like it doesn't feel real like where if it you makes... were to watch conjuring it's like oh these are real characters that happen to be in a ghost story where if you watch like halloween sometimes like oh yeah michael you know like they're really caricatures of okay people. well th that being said <laughs> Some of the things that these characters were doing, I didn't feel like they were purposely doing it to be over the top. I, I part, I part of me felt like they were actually giving their all, trying to like act. And that's what Emily said, and that scared me because I, I in my heart saying they did that. On You're purpose. in denial. <laughs> they, I say they did that on purpose, but I don't know that for a fact. And I would hate yeah. to have a conversation with James Wan and be like, I love how you made them like act that way and he, <laughs> like what he, like what are you talking yeah, about what do you mean it's kind of like actors. it's kind of like tommy was on the room right where now he says it was a comedy but if you talk to everybody in the past like no he meant this as like a romantic drama and now he says it's a comedy but it was not meant to be a comedy but i in my heart i think he did on purpose i think yeah I'm, I'm suspicious of it i i need to see him come out and say and then i'll, I'll be like okay okay but I, i'm i remain suspicious i'm with emily <laughs> on that and then how did the movie just kind of strike you overall by the time it was finished? Um, I mean, by the time it was finished, 
it's funny because I went I went back this morning and I, I I just revisited some of the moments just to kind of like like just in this did that really happen? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And is this a real when, movie? <laughs> when there, there's one thing which I'm sure you were talking about, Travis, and I was like, okay, I was like, what the goddamn hell am I watching? Like, and again, I thought it was cool because the way the camera worked with it was very unique. But like, again, I love when movies do things that are that you've never seen before, and it's just totally a change of pace. Mm. I've never seen what we're going to talk about. A lot of movies before <laughs> there was one thing that was just like holy shit this is like i felt like i was watching some dark twisted version of the kingsman like church scene or something like that like it, it <laughs> i'd see someone tweet this out i have to agree that i'll have to look at my list and maybe some chi might be up there but it's one's like how is the best action scene in this horror movie <laughs> on oh, HBO yeah Max? and like that that is like I'd have to look at it, but like in Golden Geeks when we get there, I know there's one scene in particular that's getting the best scene on because holy oh yeah, God, oh yeah, did that scene slap. But again, that's like it shows like he did horror movies, but remember then he did Fast Seven and then he did Aquaman. So it's like it's cool where it's like he has his horror stuff, but then he also kind of broadened some of his like action like superhero stuff, and it played so well. It was so damn good. Oh, yeah, with the music and everything. I mean, yeah. I don't want to talk about the scene because it might spoil <laughs> some stuff if you haven't seen the movie. But um, I, I just wanted to like emphasize, I, I do agree with Travis. I really was in that camp of like, okay, these actors are either absolutely terrible or like this is what they're going for. And because of, like I said, like there was a lot of moments that just seemed over the top 80s slasher. I'm like, okay, yeah, they're just going for that type of movie. Mm -hmm. And like, especially when you look at like just the poster for the movie, like it's very like, I don't oh, know, yeah, Friday the thirteenth. Yeah. So I I am in that camp of I don't know hundred percent if that's what he's going for, but in my head canon, that's what I like to believe. <laughs> yeah, that shot. Oh <laughs> there's there's half the poster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I hope people like this because I, I don't know if ours will be as weird, but when we make our gig versus movies, we want to get fucking pretty weird. So I respect oh, yeah. that. And and that's one thing like Taylor was saying. If anybody out there that cries and say they want original movies, well, here's one right here. There oh, yeah. there's one that like is different ideas crazy so uh yeah. is there anything i guess my last point to say non spoilers we'll probably talk about this in uh the review as well but i love the score because the score was fucking erratic and like it was like loud to the point of being obnoxious but like in a good way where it was this like the same way of something's in your face that's how the music was it was loud mm -hmm. the sounds like hurt which makes sense later on and there's some great soundtrack uh choice i'd never heard this song before it's in my favorites now there was a rendition of where is my mind by sophia wright and grayson sanders never heard in my life before but like it's it's well, i'll wait till spoilers but it starts it's like a very horrorific like opera theme sort of version maybe not exactly like opera but it's like a little techno and i could hear it, i'm like oh is that where is my mind and then it went into it's like oh my goodness so all the sound choices whether it was the yeah. sound design or the music that they chose or the score absolutely loved all that it was unsettling that's the best way i could say yeah it, you know and like there's times in horror movies where they're trying to like emphasize a jump scare scene or something and they just like crank the volume yeah. and it's not even like a like a music it's just like a loud noise and it's just like well that was just lazy but in this yeah. one like i felt like leading up to those scenes the, the audio was like really suspenseful and creepy and then if there was like something creepy that happened it wasn't just like them just ripping up the music like it was actually like a disturbing sound i don't know if that makes any sense me describing no, that but he's the, he's done that many times i feel like he did that with insidious where you'd hear loud noises but not a jump scare it's like a character screaming or something like that yeah time. or the shot i'll always say with the conjuring like i said that witch in the wardrobe when they zoom up the wardrobe and the oh. witch is perched there and it's just quiet and then when they zoom in though it's not a burn it's loud music scary music and it's like building up in her face like he's so like he's kind of the master of the jump scare i feel like he does jump scares but they don't feel obnoxious and they don't feel cheap they feel earned and they feel yeah. like there's an art to it. it's not just yeah we're gonna do that and loud music like i will like i i just could like jump scares uh, like have almost just been ruined for me because so many people have just abused them over the years I, mm -hmm. I sometimes prefer horror movies without them but when they do happen they're done well like they do with james wan it just that's the yeah. good stuff right there, you know? And like, there's moments in this movie when I'm like, okay, there's going to be a jump scare here. Like, I've seen this type of scene yep. in a horror movie before. And then they didn't take them. And I'm like, oh, okay. Because, like, I was just building up suspense for the reveal of, like, the jump scare or something. And it didn't happen. I was like, oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, and I feel like there's something early on where there could be a jump scare. And then they just show a certain character and then it disappears. And for me, that works so much better than a loud yeah, noise. No, because definitely. Because it's just, like, it's unsettling. It's that, like, uh, like Taylor, did I see this? Did I not? Like, what is this? You start <laughs> you start to focus and say, fuck, I just heard this loud noise. And, like, I'm uh, off my kilter. Like, it was 
some really well done stuff there. So yeah. anything else non spores before we uh, crack this one open? Let's crack this one up. <laughs> Show me expose, your skull. Yeah, gonna expose, <laughs> expose your skull. Expose, spo- We're about to expose the spoilery. So if you've not seen Malignant, obviously, I think we. Here's the thing: even if you don't like horror movies, I would say recommend just as like a. I think it's a good discussion movie. It's one of those like Absolutely, a lighthouse yeah. or Midsummer, where I don't think it's as heady as those. It's more mainstream, but it had. I feel like there's just so many talking points where you just want to be included. Like, hey, have you seen Malignant? Yeah, <laughs> what the fuck have? Like, totally. Yeah, so we're gonna get into it. Go watch the movie. Come back, and we'll be right here. We're gonna take our first ad break, and then we're gonna expose the spoilers review. And we're back. So I don't even know where to start with uh, let's, this bucket. But. Let's start in the beginning because you say you didn't really care for it. And I actually I actually didn't mind it. Um, I think a big reason why I, I liked it was because it reminded me so much of like the first Outlast game. How it goes to this asylum. Yeah. Some like creepy doctors are like doing some some sketchy things. And then like right away, I mean gabriel as we we now know what his mm-hmm. name is like he's just like he's pretty much got like powers at this point so it very much reminded me of the wall rider from outlast you know my name. so I, I got like so many vibes from that and right away when it was just like you know he's just like murdering all these like doctors and stuff and then like the security guard like sticks his arm in and it just like snaps and i'm like oh okay this is gonna be one of those types of movies and i think like right away it just set the tone you got of that, that 80s. when when like the security you mean like when the cop put his arm through the the bars in the jail cell that's when it no, clicked he's talking after. at the very beginning no right at the very like, like, oh, the beginning oh, the security okay. guard he's like I thought, that... you, I thought you were like it clicked <laughs> after he killed all these women <laughs> like an hour, hour and 20, 20 minutes yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know but like like right away especially with like the red aesthetic that they had like already at the start mm-hmm. of the film um it was just like again like a, a horror movie like a classic horror movie type song going it's like right 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 yeah and um so i think right away i was like okay this is gonna be like a slasher film and i'm i'm down for that because we don't really get too many of those these days and i i quite enjoyed it um there were some moments when i'm like oh this is kind of like che- like campy i guess for mm-hmm. like for you know that's the term travis coined but uh <laughs> um I like at that stage, I wasn't a hundred percent sure what I was going to be getting because it was just so early on. And that's when I was maybe a little worried for like the acting wise, but like, I think of the action, everything that was going on. I was like, okay, yeah, this, this I, I feel like this isn't going to be too, too scary of a movie. I think it'll be more of a, a fun slasher. And uh, that's kind of what we got with some, with some fun, like suspenseful moments in the middle, I'd say. Cause I, I think like the most, like the scariest parts of this movie are like, I don't know, like maybe near the end of like the first act and like, um, like, but especially before we get to the, the, the fun scenes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I would say it's like, there's, there's some scariness, but never was a movie that made me feel scared. Right. It's kind of like, and that that's well, again, I'll refer to it a lot, but the conjuring that's me like, okay, that makes me feel scared. And city said that this is like a few moments, but it's not exactly going for that i think and it's funny i had the exact opposite reaction of the cop when he got his arm broken because like he sticks his arm he gets broken and then he like pulls the arm out looks at his arm and then he's like ah like, oh he yeah almost, like, screamed like he didn't know his arm was broke and the way it was edited or acted at that point i was like oh man what's going on and like <laughs> it, it is like that throughout the whole movie but for the first little bit i thought it was the and like i said taylor stills on the fence about it but like I was on the fence of like, oh yeah, this is like being poorly acted. And I was, it didn't feel James Wan in the sense of, to me, James Wan always has like a high standard of stuff. So when it was this, I was like, oh, this feels like some sort of, you know, random horror movie we watched, like uh, the Slender Man or something. Kirk. Like I'm like, oh, this is gonna like the acting, the setup felt like that because even the whole scene it's so cheesy of like he's breaking out gabriel can't be stopped and it felt very honestly metal gear solidish as well like the way characters in metal gear solid that's another example of stuff being campy they don't act like real human beings they just act so like comic book or even anime-ish where it's just their their actions or what they say or their body movements are so much louder than what you'd be as a person so i yeah. get there's some killer breaking up but just the way everyone was acting is like this isn't believable. So for a while, I'm like, oh, is this going to be a dream sequence or a movie or something? And then it was just part of the movie. I was like, oh, wow, no, this is the movie. And I think that's what took me some adjustment too because we didn't get... I, I don't know if there was two trailers. If there was, I didn't watch the second one. But the first one, we did not get the... There might be slasher vibes, I guess, because you got a guy but and he had this knife. But uh, to me, thought it was more psychological. Of, like You see her yeah. in the room. It's changing. It's like there's a link between these two. 
So I didn't get the oh we're gonna have a Jason Voorhees, and it's not it's not like that. It's definitely more heightened. But like just even the idea of like there's gonna be a guy that's just going around brutalizing people. So the first that's where I was I had to disengage a little bit because in my mind I thought I was gonna be watching one thing, and the opening scene was something completely different. And again. I think that's good and bad because it was a fun surprise. But at the same time, I could see this working against a lot of people enjoying this movie, especially if they're just GA, like general audience, and they go to see a few movies and they're expecting a James Wan scare fest. Right. I can see a lot of people watch, but like, this is not what was shown. But as Warner Brothers, when you get this movie, how the fuck are you supposed to market a movie like this? It's a weird ass movie, right? So I don't know. It, it, it got me off kilter for a little bit, that opening scene. What about you, Taylor? Well, the opening scene, again, I. I was just trying to catch up with what was going on and I was really confused through and it stems from this opening scene. Am I dealing with something spiritual? Am I dealing with something physical? Because yeah. I have no idea at this point. And again, like what I saw in the trailers, now I'm dealing with this creepy spawn thing that is communicating through technology is very weird. But I was like, okay, I can roll with this. It's getting weird, wacky. Let's go. Badass chick goes in and uh tranks the thing and then carries on from that but yeah it was just uh it's it's i don't want to say it's set up for failure at all because again i really enjoyed the movie i thought it, it blew my mind in so many different ways but i think it just it set up its beginning for a problematic scenario and i looked online after like twitter and i was seeing there were a few other people that were kind of comment the same thing like yeah the beginning and the first act kind of really took it down a notch for them in this movie. And then like you guys said, they picked up later on, but at the end of the day, I can get past it. Cause you got to start somewhere and they chose to start with this and I can't change it now. It's in the past. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, that's why I'm excited to rewatch it. Cause now I kind of feel like I know what they are in my opinion going for and what they were yeah. setting out to do. I think I'll enjoy that more, but at the moment I was like, okay, this is not, how I was expecting. And then the way it was going, like, okay, I don't really like this either, but in yeah. retrospect, I mean, again, like I said, like, because I just was getting so many Outlast vibes, I said, like, 1993 or something, shows a super creepy asylum, and I'm like, oh, man, this is totally, like, the same thing, especially when they're like, oh, he's trying to get out, blah, 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 like, yeah. and I'm like, oh, this is the wall rider, like, this is the exact same thing, so I think that kind of got me into it, just because I love that game so much, um, and then after that scene, though, I, I think I was like, okay, that's kind of, like, a, like, an interesting opening scene, but then, like, when we get to, like, the house with, like, our main main actor madison getting home <laughs> and like the dialogue between her and her boyfriend i was just like oh no this is this is really bad yeah. this is really really bad was so, it a boyfriend boyfriend husband whatever whatever it was whatever, whatever father of the yeah. child whatever it, it, just a piece of paper taylor just a piece of paper it's all matters but like i'm like oh this is a super stereotypical asshole and like i don't know i <laughs> what do you guys think of that whole interaction i was hilarious because because he's like, she's getting home, she's pregnant, just worked like her nurse shift. He's just like watching UFC on the bed. And I'm like, holy shit, this is so bad. Like, this is so over the top bad. <laughs> no, all that, and this is where I was really starting to worry. Because at first yeah. it's like, okay, maybe they're just making some stylistic choices. And then when we get to the scene with the husband and everything, it was not good. Again, I say all this stuff saying not good because now I, I feel like this was the play but in the moment no i didn't like the dialogue it yeah. just didn't feel believable it was the generic husband but just like it was just it, it had that almost room type of the stuttering of speech of just like well you know why don't you make me dinner and it's like well i just worked well stop killing my kids and it's just like holy all shit stuff? Yeah. Like the same way time was though would just shout out random stuff in the room that was super dramatic <laughs> that was this where it's like this feels like we're going from zero to 100 real fast and does not feel earned at all and it just is to get us to a point to show okay he's an abusive husband now two things also at the end i love how they incorporate what happens in the scene of the head smash and everything like that but again e even in the campy sense i don't know if this needed to be as uh kind of uh cheesy as it was but yeah it was uh it was quite a scene. I, I, I that's the problem. I want to say it's a bad scene, but at the same time, I don't because I have a new appreciation for the movie. So it's one yeah. that I'm very excited to watch again. But it was, <laughs> it, it fits with the movie. I'll say that. It's, yeah, no, because in the moment, because I had that like fun wall rider scene, and I'm like, hey, present day now, and then it's like that dialogue, and I'm like, oh no, this is gonna be all of the interactions between all of our characters. It's gonna be this bad dialogue, and I, I was definitely worried. Um, that is so funny too. She's like coming from home from her her 
night shift. And like when Shay gets home from night shift, I'm like, oh yeah, like I got the bed all ready for you it. It's all like her. nice and everything. Where's my she dinner? The TV off. She, she like comes home. She's pregnant. He's like not helping her at all. She like turns the TV off. He's like, I was watching that. He's like, I'm tired. I'm tired, Derek. I just want to go to sleep. It's like, holy shit. This is so bad. And I mean, I am glad that I mean, yeah, we're a spoiler sector. I'm glad that he was like the first to die and it didn't take long. Like, yeah. it, like as soon as like that scene happens, we go to sleep and then like that's when he gets murdered. And we saw that in the trailer. So I am glad it happened really early because I would have been just so <laughs> disappointed if one, he stick around because he's just such an unlikable character and they really like just hit that hit us over the head with that <laughs> from his dialogue. Um, and yeah, just showing he's like a, an abuser and I... I really like that scene afterwards, like that night scene. Again, we saw a lot of that in the trailers, but I, I still really like the scene. And I think um, something that really surprised me was them like making her pregnant because that's something that they didn't show in the trailer. I like just watched the trailer before this because I wanted to make sure because I, I did not remember seeing that. And I as soon as she was pregnant, I was like, holy shit, this is going to be an interesting thing that she has to lug around, you know, like for this entire movie. But then uh, obviously that's that- it's another miscarriage, but. That confused me because again, I did it specifically say present day. Um, yeah. Okay, then I totally missed that because w- when she went into the house, I was confused because of what time period it was. The house looked old and it like, did look rickety, old, but like yeah. they had like modern tech in there. So I was like, okay, what? When is this taking place? And yeah. then I honestly thought for a second, okay, we're still in the past, and I'm thinking this is the mom of like the daughter, and we're gonna see how like it's gonna skip yeah. at some point. Like I was so confused. I. I had that exact same thought too, because for one, I don't like, like I just said, like she wasn't pregnant in the trailer. And then I'm like, okay, so this must be the mom. Cause I mm-hmm. couldn't remember what the actress looked like at the time. Um, and then <laughs> I was, ex- cause I, I saw that it went present day and I was expecting like a time jump. And I'm like, this doesn't make sense. They're going to like film this movie in the future. That doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously we, we found out what happened. And I, I thought that was, it was very tragic for our character. Like our, our main actress, it, it made mm-hmm. it, very just tragic like her story basically had like three miscarriages in like two years they said in an abusive relationship so like again we just have this really like damaged character which um i don't know it's i i kind of i don't want to say i like that but i feel like it fits a movie like this where they're going through so much trauma and they've already been through so much trauma um Mm -hmm. it's not abnormal for a horror movie like that to have your main character like that just think of like florence Pugh in midsommar right like she's extremely like just went through so much just the start of the movie and then obviously what she goes through during the movie it's not an uncommon thing to have yeah not the not, not the exact same journey i feel no. uh, <laughs> a little different <laughs> a little different but both messed up i feel like okay i feel like it's definitely out of order but i feel like we gotta talk about gabriel because i feel like for the whole <laughs> review we're gonna be dancing around him if we don't right? like because we're gonna be like that thing you know and i feel like we may as well instead of just like saying that and then working back to it so rip the bandaid off <laughs> taylor what was your thoughts on the gabriel character idea concept everything like that because it's a wild one i've never seen anything like it before in my life <laughs> And that's real life and on the big screen. So well, I um, hope in real life. life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing um, close to this. <laughs> yeah, I again, like I said at the beginning, I wasn't sure if they were going spiritual or physical at first. And then for sure I thought, okay, this is where they've set their foot down. It's spiritual. That's how I took it. And I didn't at all bat an eye at the fact that it could have been like an internal thing that's just was her and i should have because you know a lot of movies do like trick you where they oh it was this person like all along and all that stuff like it's just a double life kind of thing but i didn't get that just at all which i think is good that's definitely a huge plus so when dealing with uh gabriel it's uh his takeover of the body is like super like cringy in a good way and i i don't know why like like okay i (laughs) i consider myself decent shape am i in shape with travis no but i'm i'm oh. decent i can run i can climb i can hike i can keep Uh-oh. i can hold my own now can i do the stuff that gabriel can do no could i fucking do it backwards fucking no way how is he doing it they always these spiritual enhancements of some sort but like it was just so like i'm not i'm not bashing on this it was so visually like stimulating to see but like i'm trying to picture like how is he walking with his his feet like uh like 
like this going this way. <laughs> oh wow! Dude, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how he can move like that. But it was so cool to see him jumping over the tables mm -hmm. and just going to town. But like, as a as a villain itself, I think uh, I, I'm sold. Like it had me. I, I like his motives. I like uh, again. Like he wasn't really needed anymore when the sister came along and stuff like that. Like he was buried and like suppressed back there and. Uh, all that stuff, but I, 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 again, I think I think he's really cool. I think it was it was very very. Cool. He's a very cool villain. I love seeing like like her hair dangling down and like him, her like, face in the, in the back of his head. Yeah, that, in yeah those, with, in like, those scenes. The Fuck, coat was like the coat was like this covering her <laughs> as she's moving. It was that was a little off putting, but it was funny. So, I think. He is one of the most interesting characters I've ever seen from all like story purposes, but then also just physical. To touch on what Taylor is talking about, he is such a physically pleasing villain because he, because honestly, like this is what James Wan does. He'll show you something that's fucking batshit crazy, but then he'll make sense of it, you know? And we even get like this movie at the end has the saw like hellos that like, da -na -na. it has that whole shows you scenes, shows you everything that's happened. So I really appreciate that. Like, that's my boy. Like he did this in 2004, like that a boy, he still has it. So like just starting off, like before we know anything about Gabriel, I love his movements, everything backwards. And you wonder at first, because at first I thought he was like a really like over the top M or dexterous or whatever, how people can like bend and whatnot. So I literally thought he was bending back and forth. Like if he landed on his back, it would just flip over. And then that's his front now. But then when we get revealed later on, like, no, he's walking and do everything backwards. I can't wait to see like special features or behind the scenes on this because I want to see how the actor and all of them like they must have had hours of just thinking about like, okay, how do we do this? How do we shoot this? And obviously, there's sometimes where like at one point he's like falling off a fucking guardrail. Like, okay, that's like clearly CGI, but there's times where it's an actor. So it's like, I can't wait to see how they pull this off. Like, it must have been so much work, but you have that. And I think what Taylor was talking about where the opening of the movie right away established this is a physical threat, which I did not think was going to be happening in this movie. That's the best thing about him, that he is kind of both a physical and supernatural spiritual threat in a way, because he's physical in the sense of he is an actual killer going around that has like heightened senses like a Michael Myers. Because like, yeah, Michael Myers is just a random dude. But in Halloween, we never question why he can just pick up this heavy shit and do stuff, right? He's just super strong. So it's like, okay, evil is evil, right? But then you have the spiritual thing of like, he's literally locking Madison slash Emily, which, yeah, that was a good laugh. I was like, man, named after Taylor's fiance <laughs> or Taylor's wife and my fiance. So and I was waiting, I was waiting. My wife is a twin, too, which is even, even better. <laughs> That's hilarious. T that is a boy, too. So there you go. Yeah. It's a brother. So. I was just waiting for Shay to make an appearance in this movie. And then I'm so like, holy cool. shit. Yeah. It's a triplet. Yeah, yeah. But like, and then when they do this whole big sort of reveal as far as what's going on with Mads and slash Emily. And I will give credit to the real Emily over there because I knew once I saw the hair of Gabriel, I went, okay, something's up. This character is related in some way. It's a mother. It's a sister. It's a brother. It just looked too much like her, but Emily legitimately called it about 10 minutes in that. Oh, because they start talking about like, how she felt connected right away and she's like oh i think it's a, like a conjoined twin or something like that so she got like right off the bat she didn't get the whole like buried in the body and things like that so there's more i want to say but i want to get kirkland saw because there's a whole end point and like more reveals but what did you think about gabriel kirkland i mean just basically what you guys said it's one of the most like original ideas for a villain um i've ever seen i I love the visuals of it like especially when we get into like those matrix scenes when he's literally like neo just taking on like the entire cop precinct um and i was just like fascinated of just watching him and then like seeing madison's face like you know just like in, in like hibernation she's just, just like dummy there yeah. yeah and like his movements were crazy um I, I I liked it. There was a lot of moments that were kind of cheesy, but I think they they did a good job. I mean, I was not like Emily. I I did not catch on right away in the film. Mm -hmm. I think about like halfway th through the film, I I thought that it was a little too easy to like like figure out the plot, but then it like switched again because I was like, oh, okay, so they definitely cut this thing out of her, and that's why they're attached, and then like this thing is just out there, and like that's why she kind of has like a psychic bond with it. So right away, I'm like, okay, like a little too easy to figure that out but then it like completely switched again i was like oh okay no they're actually the same person and that, i found that really clever because at first like we were 
I think we were dissecting the trailer of like it seems very supernatural, like playing with time. Like she is mm-hmm. in this location, but it's a different time. And then like she's seeing these murders. But I liked it so much more when that reveal happened because you see her, especially when um, uh, Ke- Kekio or whatever the whatever the <laughs> the detective's name is when when he's like interacting with Gabriel, and you see Madison just like in the room, like he's still here, blah blah blah. And like I I, I like that because she. Like she's trapped in that scene. It feels like mm-hmm. she's in another location, but it's because they 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 explained it where like she's trapped in 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 her own mind, basically. Like she Gabriel's taking brain. over. Yeah, exactly. So I I like that reveal because right away I thought it was a little too easy to figure it out, but then it it like fooled me again. So I was like, oh okay. Mm-hmm. Well, um, and I like when because this was the scene that Isaac. Like, this movie's fucking awesome because I was like uneasy about it to almost not liking it to like okay I see what he's going for it, but I wish it was this way to liking it. When we got the full on reveal of her being locked up and Gabriel was starting to come up and everything like that and like splitting out of her head and the body's twisting. And then they show where Madison is in her mind just sitting there with the rest of them still just sitting locked up. Nothing's going on. But seeing all these inmates like reacting to Gabriel coming up, especially that one like Hailbilly one that was giving her shit. That's why I was like, this movie's fucking awesome. And she fully like had her Hulk transformation and turned into Gabriel and just started fucking people. And then that progressed in her breaking out, going into the cop shop. Man, that is such a damn scene. And that's where it's like, why I like this movie. It reminds me a lot of like Split or Glass, like M. Night Shyamalan, mm-hmm. where it's like, it has like superhero, like comic booky stuff, but with a horror like film on it. The same way MCU is kind of like, oh, this is a heist film, but it's done Ant Man. This is almost like, yeah, this is like a Hulk. Jack, Dr. Jacqueline and Hyde movie, but done in a horror sense. And that's why I love James Wan for doing it. And I love that. I got the biggest kick. The one thing I would say is when they start doing the saw reveal and they show like, okay, boom, 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 everything that's made sense. When they show the back of Emily and it's this thing coming out of her, very disturbing. I wish they gave him like a tad more budget on Gabriel. Like he looked a little, and again, maybe this was a choice. That's where I got the grindhouse feel. It looked like very very fake like it did not look realistic at all but uh, what i loved is they cut her cut them out everything like that and they're just like we cut as much as we could and then we suppress the rest hoping and literally her brain has eyes and a whole mouth on it and they just push it down into her skull and then put the skull back over it and i was like you gotta be fucking kidding me now like this is fucking bonkers and that's when i was like fully into like okay i think i know what they're 100 doing now and i absolutely loved it that was just such a kick ass before you guys go uh let's take our second ad break because i know we're going to talk for a while so second ad break and we're talking about more of this madness all right we're back back more of the um, game real time yeah like you guys mentioned um just like his movements and everything and i i found it really interesting the usage of like them showing him like first of all it just looked like a like a silhouette like at first like yeah. you, you couldn't really see him it's just like a shadow and then when um when Gabriel murders that old dude and like Madison's just like sitting in the bed with him. And then like, that's the first time that you like see his face and like his, like, you know, because it it is Madison and he's just like backwards, but like his leg was like bent the opposite way. And I'm like, mm-hmm. this thing must be just a fucked up looking meat sack or something. Like, I, I don't know what this thing is going to look like. And I, I think just like the usage of them not really showing it and like very, very minimally like showing the silhouette so like we saw the long hair and stuff um travis you 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 said like in the when you're doing the newscast on the trailer you thought it was gonna be a female and i totally was like oh travis was totally right this totally looks like a female and it was because it was kind of in a sense yeah it was a female madison's body but i i just really liked how they didn't really like give us a clear shot of of gabriel at all so it was it was very like okay when is this reveal gonna happen what does this thing actually look like and then when like that bed scene and like the leg was bent backwards his face is so fucked up i'm like oh man this is a whole this is a whole another thing and good thing they didn't because again much like him being on the back i wish they had a little bit more budget for the face because at the end when him and mass were talking like in the prison cell and it was like fully on his face it was like this doesn't look that great. Like, I don't know. Like, obviously, it must be hard. They're making a brain that's pulsing with eyes and mouth on. So I'm sure, like, the design and whatnot was not easy. But it never looked, like, that realistic. So I liked it a lot better when it was always shrouded by hair and you could kind of see it. Because anytime it was just, like, face on, no pun intended, it looked very cheap. But, again, I'm not sure if that was a design. I feel like you could still make it look better and have the movie be a little uh, cheesy or campy, like I said before. But, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, there was um, a moment with Gabriel. <laughs> oh yeah, so when, so like I said in the beginning, when 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 Gabriel like murders Derek, uh, like basically just like throws Madison across the room, causes her to have a miscarriage, and I. <sighs> I I really liked <laughs> the like the explanation how they said like she's had like three miscarriages in like two years. Like does that mean that she was just like kept turning to Gabriel? And like that would probably make you have a miscarriage, the movement. Well, well no. I took it as Gabriel was like absorbing it, right? To stay it, oh they right. Said that. They, they did said say that. that. It was, right. Gabriel's eating that. the fetuses to like yeah. power himself up. And that that's the only one that like I knew it was related and I knew that's why it was dying. Cause the second they showed those flashbacks of her trying to kill her adoptive mom's baby in her stomach. That's where, I, oh, well, that's why she's had so many miscarriages because, like, whatever this force is, it doesn't want children to be born yeah. or something like that. So that one I did figure out. And yeah, that's just a fucked up concept alone. But I like that because while well, I was like, okay, how, even though I have one question as a follow up for you guys, I don't know if it was ever explained, but I was like, okay, how did, you know, has she been like this her whole life and how has this been going on? But I like that. Yeah. Him doing that act is what caused it and kind of broke it open. And I do like throughout the movie, the, the pillowcase has like blood on it and stuff. And you mm -hmm. just assume like a saw when they show it all together, you just assume, Oh, her head's just still hurt from that attack. But it's like, no, this is Gabriel constantly like splitting in, splitting out. Yeah. I will ask you guys though, cause I was thinking about this and I haven't looked online. So there might be a clear answer. How did Gabriel call the cops when she was arrested? Because remember, we were this is what we refer to non spoilers. We have tons of fun with Gabriel's voice of like, oh yeah, that's not blood really. I'm your brother. And like whatever he was doing, like this voice, I was like, because they emphasize like he does still have some supernatural powers, though, in a way, because he would lights would controls electricity. Around. Yeah, they yeah. Said that. So, and he was talking through like radio waves to people. And that's where mm -hmm. like oh, I am really. But like, how did I guess that's what he did? He just used a radio wave from his. Mu I guess that explains it, right? I guess. Yeah. Even then, why am I? I don't know why I'm trying to use logic in this fucking movie <laughs> where there's a brain bad guy in the back of her head. But I guess that explains it. He used the airwaves to like hack the phone. Okay, yeah. I answered my question. Yeah. And like another like fun thing with Gabriel was um, like in the beginning, just like very minimally shown. And then once he like takes that tour guide and then we're in like this saw factory with like the big like factory fan yeah. in the background, we're like in his workshop. I'm like, holy shit. Like I was not expecting to see like from the killer's point of view, you know, like I, I thought it was I mean, at that point, I thought it was all supernatural. I didn't think he was actually a thing. I thought he was like kind of a ghost that was just murdering people. Yeah. Um, and then we go to like. It's like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre scene where it's just like he's got his victim and he's just like in his workshop making his stuff. So I, I felt like that was a big like shift in the movie, too, because I was like, holy shit, we're going to be seeing a lot more of the killer. I thought it was going to be really um, like hidden, uh, very minimally shown, maybe have like a face reveal right at the end. But <laughs> it's... Well, that that mo like he kidnaps that woman. Also, we find out later that's revealed to be the birth mom. But like when like she's being questioned and the cops like starting to believe her like it wouldn't be madison when she crashed through oh man the, the apartment or whatever the house roof and then came to the floor i legitimately gasped i was like oh yeah shit. Me not too. One, yeah one because like it's not good for our character but two she's been up there the whole time and it starts to make you question like okay what is the fuck going on like how was this thing in her attic or whatever yeah. like how was she doing all this and that's where again it's like it, it's because we just assumed it was something supernatural but when you saw him it was like okay i guess it is a guy but then when some other stuff i'm like okay, how is it just a guy though and it's just like mm -hmm. that was crazy especially when madison was like he must be like sneaking in my house and brought her in there i'm like <laughs> how the <laughs> fuck did he do this and... yeah and who's gonna believe you who's gonna believe yeah that? <laughs> no it, it, it almost it, like it reminded me of that scene in hannibal when uh they they find uh, what's her name the... i'm forgetting that yeah uh she's like the Cla clary sterling stand in uh uh, uh i know who you're talking about the fbi yeah. agent though yeah, yeah exactly and they, they they just all the evidence is on will graham <laughs> basically and like yeah. i i that's what the scene reminded me of and i 100 percent try i like gasped i'm like holy shit she was above them because <laughs> like because especially just bouncing between the shots right like we're in this super scary warehouse type like saw like scenery and it's like where the fuck could this be i honestly thought it was in the same location as like the tour um, I assume yeah. that he just like took over like the tour guide's office, even though it looks like a scene from Saw. And then uh, <laughs> she just falls through the roof. Holy shit, that was crazy. 
yeah no i create like i was just such a fun reveal because it was just something i was not expecting and then it just made the plot that much in- interesting more, more interesting in the moment yeah Taylor, what do you think about that or you haven't spoken upon the exactly point of gabriel being on the uh literally on the mind of emily and stuff like that um i don't i it's hard to put it into words because i've never seen something like that so no i just i what no i'm i was just i was never i was it was so unexpected and the way they did it again i thought the cgi was fine i thought the settings were dark enough and the hair was drizzly mm. enough that it didn't bother drizzly. me just seeing his uh, his expression there but i uh i you nailed it on the on the you nailed it on the head like <laughs> the the blood being on the pillow and just how at, after watching it all now it all just makes sense and comes together like okay yeah it just fits how he was taking over her and all that stuff and even then how she was locked in the prison that jail cell and just it looked normal to her she's waiting for something to happen and he was just going on this killing spree it bothers me that cops in these movies shoot and as they shoot a bad guy they walk towards them as they shoot the chick that comes down the stairs and pops a shot off is walking forwards and then she gets flipped around and her arms like snapped like fuck (laughs) that would just be horrible to experience on every level but that's why you don't fucking you don't push unless you got backup with you because she got fucked up um as far as like the the whole tour guide scenario goes again it's just one of those moments where i don't want to contribute it to like the bad acting it's just i feel like common sense where she turned the lights off you could hear something was like coming like why do you just why do you mess around you just you get your shit you get out she was like holding the plug unplugs it and then she like walks into the darkness it's like you're holding the fucking plug just plug it back in yeah exactly oh my gosh yeah it's just yeah stuff like that bothers me but as far as like the way they filmed her falling through the floor that made me jump because i was like holy shit like i didn't expect her to fall and like yeah her being in the house was like oh my god and then like the music kicked in that ultimate like score i was like is the movie ending is this the climatic finale here it felt <laughs> like, and that that was the where is my mind track i was talking about that's where it came in and because it comes in and it's just this loud noise and then she just screams at high pitch and that's where again it's like this feels kind of cheesy in the moment but mm. then you just get this like like layaway shot and looking at everybody like the cops and everything and that's what's like oh i think that's the song and it was but it was it was like a great like music cue it was it mm-hmm. felt like something you feel like a halloween maze or something i don't know i i, I oh, yeah. really enjoyed that i i really i liked how it was his nest as he calls it gabriel's like his nesting yeah. or whatnot i thought that was kind of cool but yeah the whole excuse me the whole area up there was just uh yeah, it was freaky. Again, I touched upon how they filmed her just falling through and appearing in front of them. That, along with the scene earlier when I think Gabriel first made his appearance to her when she was like locking the doors, and it goes up and it shows her running through like yeah. the rooms like and stuff, POV. and then it shows yeah, like his POV, and it shows her like running like they had like an upstairs level, and they showed her run below, and then it showed like above. Like it was just so well filmed. I love yeah. the cinematic aspect. And it's a good trick because right away it makes you assume, oh, there is a physical killer and it's not like her or something, right? Because it's like you're seeing his point of view through his eyes chase her. So you go, oh, okay, what is this thing? Not knowing while well, this thing's on the back of her head. And maybe that's almost the way you can look at it as like it's seeing what's behind her, right? Like that's us seeing that. It's kind of like a mm-hmm. mirror where the back of her head seeing her run. So we're like looking what she, the back of her head would be seeing, what Gabriel would be seeing. And can he yeah. see through the front of her head, do you think? Or is he just seeing well, the back yeah. and like where she going? I because th- they they explained when they were doing like tests at the asylum, like they had um uh Gabriel looking at like cards and then Emily would be like answering oh. like like house or something, like whatever they're seeing. Cause they explained that he could like access her visuals or vice versa, whatever it was. They did mention it. Cool. There you go. Good, good. Uh, and the other thing I want to shout out is because the very first image we ever got of Malignant was Gabriel, his glove, holding this weapon. And I just, if you look at it, it's just such a striking, really cool image. I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, James wants to make something cool. And he did. But it's just like it was on a blue background, I think. And it's just like, what is this? Like, this is a weapon we've never seen before, right? And it's tough because, like, in horror movies, we've seen we've seen it all we've seen so many weapons so you got to be creative when you're making like okay what is the killer's weapon it has to be something that stands out right so this weapon i was like what is this thing gonna be and i love and this is where i started really cluing to again like i felt like they were making something on camp making something camp because they go to the surgeon's home that was like cut the cancer you're gonna cut the cancer out but like 
they show on her like whatever like a stand or something it just says yeah it just says excellence in surgery just surgery like nothing specific no, like it's just like so cheesy and i love that he takes that he kills her with it and then he takes it back to his nest and like grinds it down to be his personal weapon because one it looks cool but two it also has like meaning towards the villain and character which yeah. always is the best thing to do for a killer like obviously like look at jason he picked up a hockey mask put it on and everyone just liked that there's no meaning to a hockey mask other than he found it but this weapon has meaning and i love that and I, again also i didn't mention but in the nest i love we know why because he's moving backwards but at the time his movement was so frantic and it felt like angry because he's just like like just and he's moving so quick and it's just so like you can't get your eye on him he kind of just feels like a fucking coked out guy but i love the uh the excellence of surgery weapon it was just like yeah a, just a oh, chef's kiss and i really liked it aesthetically as well too um i was just gonna say the way uh, noting on the way he moved and again like the weapon i'll touch upon after the way he moved it almost had like a degree of stop motion to it yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. It did Jack Skellington, because he he feels so tall. He's not that much taller than her, but he feels like tall and lanky. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, the weapon. Oh, what was that? Oh, nothing. I'll ask after. It's a different okay. topic. Uh, the weapon I thought was very cool. I I I like these original like crazy killers that come up on t- into cinema. I like how they have their own identities, and I like that he has his own identity. He's got his own like signature weapon, which was super cool. It just gave me Assassin's Creed vibes. I don't know why, but uh and then yeah, he just it, as you said, it has significant meaning to him. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I saw like the trophy on the I'm like, oh okay, that's where it comes from. That's nice. And he filed it down, made it his own and yeah, it was just it was a cool looking weapon. Nice and gold. It looked very mm-hmm. deadly. And it's cool because like he's distinctly all black and stuff too, like the hair, mm-hmm. the trench coat. I love that that was like his gimmick and clothes he needed when he even the call. He's like, I want my stuff back. Like <laughs> <took> my things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's because it almost feels like he has the mindset of a child. So, but I love like when he breaks out of that set, like whatever that holding, and he kills all those cops. He goes in the evidence locker room to get all his stuff, and then he goes back to massacre everybody. Like he couldn't do it before. Like he needs like his identity and stuff like that. And that was really fun. I was gonna ask you guys if you were a cop, would you have made that bold play of jumping out the window on the trash can? Because that was really pulled. But I oh my god, I land on his that. shoulder too. Oh, I'm like, yeah. fuck, that mustn't have felt good. But I love when he lands there and then he rolls off, and then we just got a shot of Gabriel running past camera, just like, and just like you just see his hair whipping around, and that's where it felt like a scary movie, like the comedy one. I'm yeah. like, okay, what's well, like the way he moves? But again, it all makes sense. But it was just so funny when they would just show him like scurry off. It's like, oh man. Especially when he just like he like jumped through that tiny little window <laughs> and he just like swings right in and then <laughs> fuck our cop was brave. I'm like, fuck that. I'm calling back. I'm not going in there after this thing. Oh, he really wanted to bang the sister though. That's why oh, he wanted true. to bang he uh, discount Florence Pugh. Because that's <laughs> what I I looked at it the whole time just like uh this actress looks exactly like get a Florence Pugh type, you know, yeah. like she looked like that. It's funny she was playing a little sister. And I liked her enough. It was good that she was discovering mystery. And like you said, Kirkland, about the boyfriend, you like that he died right away. I love that when they went to the adoptive mom and she said, Gabriel, she got scared. And right away she showed a tape. She didn't do any of this. Like, I don't want to talk about it. Like, that was in the past. Like, yeah. you're crazy. Like, you know, and hey, I'm someone that loves nightmare on elm street it was fine to do it then because it was the early 80s but that trope of freddy's not real that's not a thing we've seen it so many times like i don't need an additional 10 to 15 minutes of our main character's mom denying it just to eventually be like yeah you're right it was true so i liked right away she's like no there's some crazy stuff in your childhood and you were fucking weird you talked to a guy like that that's where and this is the scene that reminded me of almost like sinister and this is where it was the creepy stuff to me when they did the home videos and it's christmas time and the dad zooms in on her on the phone and she's like no i'm not gonna kill the baby i can't kill it and it was just like just put yourself in that situation if this child you adopted <laughs> is on a phone saying i can't kill the baby and then she just looks at the camera and she doesn't move it was fucking it was creepy like oh, the yeah. birthday party stuff which we saw in the trailer too but like, that's the stuff that got me that got me in the heebie jeez i really but i liked everything as far as like how they discovered the mystery the mom you know the sister everything like that they were in it enough that they worked but weren't too annoying i like that you know when she showed up as like the princess so the, the, the cop to me the two cops were maybe the worst like acting wise like i just wasn't the fan of those characters i was like okay this cop kind of has like 
a crush on her, but it wasn't a big deal. People just joked about it. So like, I thought they were in it just the right amount. You know, they were used as good kind of uh, like like heart stones for the victim to be like, oh, these are the people you got to protect. And for a split second, when they killed that sister, I was like, oh, shit. And then literally five seconds later, I figure like, OK, no, she's in control. But at first when she shot her, I was like, Jesus, this this movie went right for the juggler. Just killed the sister right in front of her. Yeah. Absolutely. I I agree with you with the cop. I thought they were pretty bland. Um, <laughs> I found it funny, too. There's like a CSI like crime scene investigator that like was just so thirsty for the detective. And like oh, there yeah. were so many lines when she's like, uh, what does he say? It's like trying to trying to find your 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 second something. And she just like looks at him and, and he just like completely ignores her. And I'm like, this is this is just comedy for me. This is hilarious. Um, she wasn't really in it much, but nonetheless i i was worried that once like our detective like face down with gabriel um i thought for one i'm like okay he finally figures out that it's it's not madison which again that was like another fun instance because i'm like there's no way that it could be madison because she's sleeping right now right yeah, yeah. and then and then she wakes up like from one of like the nightmares that happened and then like her sister comes right up and i'm like okay this is perfect because then her sister can just be like no like she was with me the whole time it's impossible that it was the same person so i i love that i was so confident that it wasn't her and then when it was her i was like holy shit okay that's a that's an awesome reveal but uh getting back to the de detective when he was doing that like mad chase for gabriel i 100 percent thought he was gonna die there i'm like this yeah. is so unfortunate because it's like he just found out and then now they're just gonna kill him off he's not calling for backup or anything so i was surprised when he actually made it out alive um and then i think that's when the the cops like bring in madison and then they actually like start to believe her and that's what was so fun for me because i was like okay no there is two people they're finally trusting her and then <laughs> and then i think right after that sort of was when uh the mom like fell through the roof and it was just like, what is going on in this movie? So there, I think that section of the movie was the most like mind twisty horror type yeah. because after that, you know, once we start getting to like Gabriel revealing himself, expose your skull. <laughs> I, it just, I was like, okay, this is a whole nother genre even like, this is just a different movie. Yeah. And I'm not saying I, it was a bad thing because I was just totally into it. It just, it just switched flavors. And, uh, like I said, to me, the last bit switched into the superhero realm of like a horror superhero. Cause like <laughs> yeah. when Gabriel was doing the action scenes and it was a whole boat, like it was literally Bruce Banner and the Hulk. It was, I control you. You don't control me scenario. You know, like I said, Dr. Jackal and Hyde, like that moment when she puts in them in the prisons. <laughs> oh my God. Like it's so good. But again, it feels so cheesy. He's just running at it. He's like, I'm not. And even then, like this, or like i don't know like i would i'd be curious to see what they would do like because i don't want to say i wouldn't want a sequel because like james wan's proof like saw in city is conjuring like anytime you think how could you do this he finds a way but like they did the whole superhero setup of like i'm gonna get out and she's like yeah and i'll be ready for you it's like we see that all the fucking time in comic book movies and like to me i feel like he clearly has some sort of idea because as a filmmaker i don't think you would have like that line in there you would just have him locked away forever right but the fact that he's like i could get out it's like she's like i know and i'll be ready it's like wow and that was just just him stuck in this jail so it was weird so i did think it switched to more of a action -y side like 100 oh, percent i you know i said it was like the matrix like the music the the crazy fight choreography which i was not expecting in a movie like this hopefully and it was in there it was fun and you mentioning like just hinting at another movie i mean especially like we got kind of a cliffhanger at the end how it like goes to that lamp and yeah. then you get some like electric static um, she's got the power now she can control electricity I don't know if that's <laughs> what it meant <laughs> it's gonna be crossing over dc <laughs> no, like, gonna I, appear saying, in Aquaman. I want her to, i want him to be a matrix like you said like he'll be like yeah. popping up and you know <laughs> he could fight with all of them so uh taylor any thoughts on anything we talked about there I had one note. Yeah. Um, I can't remember it. Um, I had one note, but can't remember. I'm out of my notes, so. Oh, I got some notes here. Okay, well, um, let's take our last ad break because we'll do our notes and then we'll do a rating. So we'll be right yeah. back. We're back. Hey, Kirkland, you start because I'm sure Taylor's still searching through his mind like Gabriel for his notes. So, 
Yeah, I mean, we, we kind of touched upon like the cinematography uh, of the movie. I thought like the shots that they chose were just so clever. And like that top down view when she's running around the house and even when she's like frantically like trying to like lock all the doors when she sees Gabriel outside, like just such a fun scene. I really loved when we sh- when we saw the house at nighttime and just the fog surrounding it. It just felt like spooky yeah. and like it was just such a fun setting. And I'm. I like that the house was like spaced enough from the other houses that it just felt so isolated. Like I, mm. at first, I thought she was just like in the middle of butt fuck nowhere, and she was just completely alone. <laughs> Neighbors then, could hear her scream. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, <laughs> that I, I makes thought that's kind of funny. And then in daytime, they showed that there actually was neighbors. It's just they were pretty distant. But yeah, that line, I'm like, who the fuck heard her? Like, how did they even like? How did the cops get here in the first place? I was confused on. But um, just a couple of those scenes. The other. One of my favorite scenes of the movie actually was <laughs> I was joking around. I said it was like the Trinity killer because that just what the gentleman reminded me of. But mm. that scene was so good. It, I love the red light in the room because it just felt like an impending doom is coming for this guy. Like it, it just I don't yeah. know if you want to like call it like he's just in hell at this po- moment. Um, all of the moments of like Gabriel just being like behind him and then not there. And then when he goes into the closet, you're just like he's going to die here. He's going to die here. And then that entire scene went on and he didn't actually die in that scene. Like it's later on when um, Madison has like the dream. And then that's when she sees Gabriel for the first time. But that entire, that entire sequence was just so fun for me because I was just waiting for Mm -hmm. that jump and it didn't happen. And like, even when it goes under the bed and then it's getting closer and closer to his legs and then his legs lift up and I'm like, Oh yeah, that was so good. That was a great shot. Yeah. And then, and then right after that, it goes to Madison sleeping and she's like, close her eyes. And all of a sudden it's just like a red light on her. And like, we just saw the scene. So we know exactly where she is. And I just thought it was so clever. Very much reminded me of, uh, uh, nightmare on elm street because it's like oh no i can't fall asleep i can't fall asleep i'm not gonna fall asleep and then all of a sudden something changes but you didn't see them fall asleep like maybe they close their eyes for a second but it's like oh no they're they're fucking in deep sleep now they're fucked and it totally reminded me of that that scene was just so goddamn good for me i loved all the shots in it whether it was the perspective of inside the closet underneath the blood under, underneath the blood underneath the bed the um and just everything it was just so good and i it was such a fun scene I got to mention, too, when you say Trinity Killer, it's funny. At one point, remember, they do find a victim in a black. Uh, That's bath, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's all, all around this movie, you know, stuff like that. Totally. Uh, Taylor, did you figure out that note you had? I did. So <laughs> the thing that kind of like two things on this. So when the sister goes to the like shutdown hospital asylum now, <laughs> That scene, this is where I'll actually comment on the CGI. It wasn't good. She parked way too fucking close to that cliff. That actually bothered me. Like, that's that's so dangerous. Like, what is she thinking? (laughs) And the other thing, why do people leave in the middle of the day to get to these horrible places in the thick of night? Like, leave at night and get there in peak daytime. And why is she alone? Because there's a picking claw. Okay, who's going to go with her? Her mom's at home. I'd pay someone. I'd pay someone. Would they accept the money? Well, they don't know where you're going. Just say, hey, come on an adventure with me. I'll give wow. you like a thousand bucks like you're for a day of your time. putting someone's life on the line just for your benefit. And see, I wouldn't want to go there alone. When you say why they're going at night, it's a ticking clock. She has to go right now. This is Madison slash Emily's life at risk. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Right? I didn't I didn't really like that scene either for like the main reason of like, why the fuck is she alone? Like, she's going to die or something. And I don't know. I felt like it was a location that could have been saved for like an end battle, um, which we never got. So I felt like all in all, didn't Sequel, really ha- didn't end really battle. Was not the to... police station. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. Like, oh. I felt like because they're going to this location, it's like, hey, this seems like a perfect location for the end battle because it's like Gabriel's origin where he was. Um, it's all like run down, super creepy, like setting. You know, the record room in the basement, like I felt because it was just setting up so much and it didn't even like all she did was went down, found the tapes and then she just teleported back home. I felt like it was an, an unneeded scene because it, it didn't build upon like suspense or anything because it just happened so yeah. quick. Um, it wasn't like her going around with a flashlight all freaked out. What was that? You know, like actually building upon suspense. It just seemed unnecessary, honestly. Well, they use the suspense for, their, I guess, the tapes. So right after when they're pumping the tapes, that was building into the peak you know prisons um that's moment. true so yeah that was their suspense moment they yeah the whole, yeah like but I, I, yeah I, I, was, of suspense. I, I didn't have a problem with her getting the tapes it was just like the whole venture like it just yeah. se- seemed unnecessary 
I don't know. Like I said, sequels, say that asylum, you know, the same <laughs> way the Warrens and the Conjuring, they have that house of all this stuff in there. It's like, mm-hmm. man, how many case files do these people have and what else is in that asylum? True. You know, like I'm interested to see there, but uh, yeah, no, it didn't have much of a purpose. It was, it was a cool looking asylum though. And yeah, CG, even we had talked about in the trailer still didn't look the greatest as the CG when the world turns, it looked very computer generated. Unfortunately to me, it's just like, Lots of CG effects in here didn't, uh, you know, I got past them. They worked well enough, but they still take me out of like, oh, this is CG. It doesn't feel like it's happening in the actual world. And I know because it is, we kind of talked about this with Sung Chi, you can make the argument because it is like a dreamlike sequence. That's why it looks like that. I just wish it was like a little fine tuned more. But again, nothing to like a huge critique for me. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I wrote the note that Kakoa was just so dumb. That was the, the cop. And the, yeah. like, they're both really dumb. Like the. I guess like the female cop was like very like suspicious and she ended up being right. So kudos to her, I guess. But I just found both of them being so like stereotypical cop in one of these movies. Yeah. And I guess I, for my, one of my notes, I should say why my name is the adopted because the scene I was talking about in the non spoilers was that moment when uh, Madison reveals the sister. She's like, and I was adopted, <laughs> and it just goes to the sister. Dude, the, the music, music cue. Yeah. yeah, the music cue, and it zooms in the sister's face. That was the moment <gasps> it clicked, and I was like, okay, they're doing, in my opinion, he's doing this on purpose, because that felt like a cue laugh scene, didn't it? It felt like you should be laughing. It felt like a scary <laughs> movie scene. She's like, and I'm adopted. What? And then yeah, just her like, face was yeah. like, oh. And, 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 and I, then it transitioned yeah. to the next scene. I was like, yes. what is going on? And who knows? Maybe he's a mad genius. Maybe I'm giving too much credit. But if it was a first time director, I would go, eh, I don't know, because I've just seen his other work. And that's what I love about this. Is actually, you know, I'll save it for my final thoughts. But I, that was the moment for anyone wondering, non spoilers. I clicked and like, okay, this is, we're going for this on purpose, I feel. So I, at least I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anything else i had just the over the top 80s slasher vibes was great mm-hmm. honestly i mean i was a little unsure on if it was purposeful or not but it, once it got it was fairly early on when it was just so much it was probably honestly the adoption thing that <laughs> travis just said but i was like okay this is this even if this isn't intentional i'm gonna take it as intentional so that i can enjoy it and not just be like this is just a bad movie mm-hmm. um there was one line I wrote down, I didn't write who said it, and I can't even remember what, what happened, but I wrote it down because it was so just memorable. There was one person that just said, you lying cock knocker. And it just, I had never heard of that before. And it just it made me laugh. So I had to write it down. And unfortunately, I can't even remember who said it, but it was just such a memorable line. So <laughs> I remember lying, but same thing. Yeah, I don't remember who said it. I remember he- hearing the term cock knocker. That's what I remember. Yeah, hearing, so. yeah no, exactly. <laughs> what about you, Taylor? I've never heard anyone call me a cock no, knocker before. I meant, do you have any last notes before we give our, if you have any last notes, show up, if not give your final thoughts and a rating. Uh, final thoughts. Um, I would, I feel like this is a movie that is actually worth seeing in theaters. I, I really do. And I say that because I think visually it's extremely pleasing. <laughs> Some things it's very gross and others, but I think it's very pleasing. And again, like the transition of the scenes, how it was very like dream, like as it was moving around behind her and stuff. I love that. I thought it was super, super cool. Um, I would have loved to see this in a pre COVID world where the theater was full because like, I would love to hear the reaction of some things. Cause there is one moment in that last fight with Gabriel. He just takes a fucking chair and whips it across. Oh my God. The room. Oh my God. I know. So good. And I, I was it... just like, man, in the theaters, it would have been like, it would have been gas and laughter. Like, man, I wish this came out pre- before COVID. Cause I want to see this in a theater with a bunch of people. It would have been a hell of a good time. I think there was a bunch of those moments where yeah. I'm like, man, just to like, Get, like to look around in the theater and just see what everyone else is vibing on if they're scared if they're laughing if they're just thinking it's the dumbest thing ever but yeah no that scene i'm like okay they're both going to escape you know the cops are going to get out the door because gabriel's just like crawling to the other door he's not even looking at them and he's just like watch this like 360 <laughs> no scope them with the chair and so over I the knew, top that's so what i knew top. oh yeah and that's what i knew it worked because emily was enjoying the whole movie but she even fucking laughed when that happened because it, it was you can't not laugh it's like gabriel just took a chair and whipped across the room and would pinpoint out 
accuracy <laughs> knocked him out. Like, fuck, he's a boss. I want him in Dead by Daylight. You know, I want Gabriel <laughs> running around. You didn't even anyway. finish them off either. You just like threw the chair no. at them, and then like this, the the intern CSI chick just came in and saved them. So, which that was a good subversion too, because the whole time she was in the room, the evidence locker room, and you thought for sure she's gonna die. But that's why sometimes folks hiding is the best method, because like she hid in there the whole time, and then she just like crawled out of the end. I'm like, oh, they didn't even kill her. Like I thought yeah. for sure it was gonna be a joke at the end. So, but sorry, I just had to mention that when you were mentioning some oh, crazy mention theater that, scenes, because it would have <laughs> been. I'm not saying don't go see in theaters now. I'm just saying like obviously both theaters you can't get a full room i would have loved to have seen it in that though yeah um so what else i mean yeah if i don't know it's i just think yeah it visually is it was really really awesome i love the different scenes and cinematography i love how they did not let you really pick up the sense that yeah this is actually her until they wanted you to know because there's so many times where you can kind of piece it together and figure that out i'm glad they didn't do that i'm glad they hit it I love the villain. I think he was unique and custom is his own origin story. And again, I know I said like, okay, the first act was definitely a little rocky and that's fair. But in retrospect, now after finishing the movie, it does fit better and coincides with everything that unfolded. So you just got to get over that first little bit, but yeah, I recommend it. Do you see it in theaters? I would probably go like, a. <laughs> um, I don't want to be like overly generous. I'd probably go like a 7.5 out of 10. I feel like that's fair. And I'm not because it's definitely not like a perfect movie to me, but it was definitely a movie that I enjoyed. I'd watch again. I didn't necessarily care too much for all the excessive gore stuff or whatnot that unfolded when like really? she was killing all the chicks and everything. I thought it was like a little like crazy, but it, again, it fits because they were just going off the rails with the movie. When that curb stomp happened and like the eye popped out a little bit, I was like, ah, oh, I didn't need that. Come on. But it's fair you know i can handle some of the other stuff and everything but yeah fair enough kirkland bats are yeah so this was <laughs> i mean all in all I had, I had a fun time with it i i think i could see myself rewatching it like with with some people that haven't seen it because it's one of those like travis mentioned in the non-spoilers like it, it's a fun movie to just be like oh have you seen that movie malignant and then it's just a talking point and you can just yeah. kind of discuss like can you believe that this happened like it was <laughs> um I'm glad, and again, I'm kind of making an assumption here, but I'm glad that they knew that it was cheesy and they were going for it. And I haven't heard James Wan confirm that, but I'm just kind of hoping he is because I've seen what he can do. I, I know he's not a bad director or anything like that. And I just, I really like the the AD slasher music cues. The Like I said, the red light usage in this film was just so fun for me. Um, and <laughs> it was like... The plot was just so beyond what I could have expected. And so I, I had a fun time with it. I think I would give it like an 8 out of 10, honestly, because I, I just enjoyed it so much. Um, and for for reasons like when the mom was revealed to be in the house the whole time and it was like, holy shit, what? And then when I was like, uh, I even made a note in my phone. I'm like, the plot was a little too easy to figure out. And then it switched again. And I had to like delete the note. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, I was, you know, like it, it got me there. Cause I'm like, Oh no, it was just something that she cut out of her. And then for some reason she's just attached to it like spiritually, but no, it's literally in her fucking head. And then it, it's fun when you think back to like when the boyfriend originally just smashed her head in the wall and like that, like open gabriel up to the world basically and it's just so funny because she like leans up against the wall and the or the door sorry and then she just slides down and like now i'm just picturing like gabriel's face just like like just like smushed against the the, I'm back. the door uh. there yeah. <laughs> yeah all right yeah so for me i was gonna say it earlier but i thought i'd say it for now for fun yeah i guess as we were talking about just what i realized is why i like this so much for a few reasons the craziness some of the action stuff like that but it feels like it's a james wan kind of special I'll put together it reminds me a lot of the way once upon a time in hollywood is for qt where it's like this feels like a bunch of stuff he's done before but he's put together an all one film and like we we're talking about before he has like the big action superhero ness with the Aquaman and the Fiasa Furious here with Gabriel fighting. He has the gore factor, which Taylor didn't like, but he has like the gore factor as far as Saw, where there's like people's arms breaking and eyes popping and all that stuff. That's very much like Saw and the torture porn, you know, kind of things that got in the past. It has that insidious conjuring vibe where it's like it's scary, it's spooky, it's supernatural. It had like I said, the Saw like uh, kind of 
ending where it's like here's the montage everything put together with the music so it's just like he took everything that i really like that he does and put it all together i'm giving this a nine with an asterisk i mean this is a nine with an asterisk that i think with another rewatch there's a chance it could be like maybe even close to a 10 legitimately but it's just because like it's that beginning is like because there's even stuff where i wonder even the scene with the abusive husband or whatever is that like did it still need to be like that type of style like i don't know there's some scenes where it's like maybe the camp or cheese was a little too much or they just didn't nail the tone down exactly but that's why now i want to watch it again with a second opinion because i had that and this is very different but like i've had it probably a few times but i feel like there's some where spider verse where spider verse i watched the first time me and dylan saw it earlier oh this is great one of my favorite movies of the year it was the second time where it just hit me. I was like, man, this is one of the greatest comic movies of all time. I remember that year I had Infinity War firmly placed above it in the Golden Geeks. And then when I saw it that second time, I was like, no, like something just switched and just seeing it again was like, wow, okay. So that's why I'm interested to see if I were to watch it again. I think it would go up, but maybe it goes down. I don't know. It's a weird movie. But yeah, I think definitely a nine for me. I'm surprised how much, especially at the beginning of it. But I guess the best thing I can say about this movie is since it's been over, I've thought about it more and more. And the more I thought about it, the more I like it and stuff. Like I love the idea. And again, I love just how crazy it was. This is a film that I love. This is the type of stuff I love seeing comic book movies and your action movies we've seen before. But I also love stuff like this where it's like, no idea was I thinking this was going to be the plot when I started this movie up, and I'm happy it was. So there we go. We did it. Oh, what were you saying, I feel like it's rare for Travis to be the highest rating in these it reviews. It doesn't happen often. It's normally like it's the opposite. Normally I'm yep. kind of in the middle. Taylor's the most positive. Travis, like, yeah, no, it just was bad. So it's yep. kind of fun when it's the opposite. Yeah, no, I just, like I said, I've been thinking about the whole time, and I'll just look at Emily and be like, this movie's fucking awesome. What's Emily, what would Emily rate it? Like a two? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that chair scene, Hang did on, it save you guys her? Talk. Let me add, I'll <laughs> roll up the window. Roll up the window. Um, any additional scenes to shout out? Uh... I, I I found it funny when they're like in like the bullpen area and they're having like a shootout and the cops like Kakoa and like the female are like, we're getting shot at. It's just like, that was bad. All the, all the, all the cops <laughs> yeah. are just shooting at each other. But uh, She didn't have an exact number, but she said less than five. So a fail. <laughs> <laughs> so but i've been bugging her because she said it was a trash movie but i'm like there's more other trash movies out there she did offend me and say that she preferred uh 2016 suicide squad over this and i was like okay that's Ooh. a big sin right there yeah. but then i did think i caught her because i was like oh halloween's coming up we're watching all these movies halloween town and she fucking hates those movies and i was like oh what about that she's like well, she's like halloween little... town no she doesn't she's like oh, this is who wow. i'm living with this is like Jeez, spousal abuse, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so next week, uh, I should pronounce the beginning. Fuck, I should have. But we got two retros. The Dex retro starts. The Bond retro starts. You guys will be reviewing what if. And you got a newscast. You got forecast oh, yeah. next week. And uh, yeah, look out again. Social media. The schedule will be there. Uh, gentlemen, this was a fun one. I'm excited to. Uh, I'm excited like because I'm not saying it's going to go a bunch of places, but. I'm really excited for Golden Geeks this year, probably because we actually have fucking movies this year. And we can actually <laughs> not have like, okay, what are the three we can figure out? Like, I'm excited to talk about best scene and best villain and stuff like that. And just because we're in September, and I was like writing it down, like, okay, this might be there, might be there. So, a couple it's more crazy. Months, so. It's crazy to think too, like how many movies we still have left until oh, Golden yeah. Geeks, right? Like, mm -hmm. there's a lot still to come. Yeah, like, and if it does come out, which it says it's coming out, it's one of those things that, like, I'm just expecting for Dune to come out and be the automatic win, in, in my opinion. Well, maybe well, Spider-Man even, right? That's what's coming out Christmas. It always comes out, yeah. yeah. I just think Dune, I think we're all going to see Dune, and we're just going to, it's going to be that clear choice of, like, yeah, it's Dune for best. I just, I Not feel Venom? like it's going to happen. Venom no. too. <laughs> no, no. Maybe, best maybe, villain? Uh, <laughs> yeah, there might be another film category it might win, but not best. Uh <laughs> But uh, yeah, there we go. So thank you very much for tuning in and listening, ladies and gentlemen. And we promise when you hear from us next, it'll not be boring. Bye-bye. Goodbye. -bye. Bye -bye.